But Kirsten may have the horses and depth in 72 when Miami seeks to avenge its humiliation by Florida's Gators in 71. It was not so much this 82-yard punt return by Florida's Harbin Clark and the extra point putting the Gators out in front, 45 to 8, they'll be talking about. But it's the next play coming up after Miami linebacker Gary Alteed picks off a John Reeves pass on this play right here. There's the interception. Now watch this. The Canes second and seven on Florida's eight. The entire Gator defense lies down, letting John Hornibrook go in unmolested with a two-point conversion. It was Florida 45, Miami 16. As it turns out, there was a motive behind the great laydown with John Reeves back in at quarterback. He passes to Carlos Alvarez for 15 yards. That's enough to break Jim Plunkett's all-time career passing mark, 7,300 plus yards. As the Florida team celebrated by taking a dip in the Orange Bowl fountain, Miami's coach Fran Kersey was saying that Gator coach Doug Dickey would live to regret the day he pulled such a Bush League stunt on the Canes. Well, let me say it this way to you. There were several angles to this ball game. Number one is that our football team came to play and they wanted to win the game very badly. This was a game we thought we would remember over the winter. And uh, so we came to play and played very well to start the ball game and uh, made some things happen. It turned out to half that John Reeves had 170 yards passing at the half. And we felt this made us within striking range of an all-time record in collegiate passing. Uh, those are unusual records. So it uh, got down to the point, Harvin Clark returned a punt 80 yards in there, which uh, if we'd have had that 80 yards to have worked with a little bit, uh, we would not have had to have done anything to get the ball back. As it turned out, we did not have the record. After the game was obviously won, we did not have the record. And so it became a matter of having to get the ball back. Uh, I called timeout two times in a row, hoping that Miami would throw the ball or run wide uh, where we would have an opportunity to they would score or we would have a chance to intercept the ball or something, but they did not. And uh, so we had no choice after our timeouts were all gone. If we wanted to get the record, but to let Miami score, uh, the way it was done was not by my instructions, but the uh, players chose to do that. So uh, I, I would uh, certainly say that while well, we our intention was was get the ball back. So Coach Dickey has his reasons for turning what was admittedly a lopsided football game into a farce to give his quarterback a shot at a record. It was Bush League, and Dickey's intimation that he didn't approve of the way his team let Miami score certainly doesn't seem consistent with most of the football coaches I've known. That maneuver last night has to tarnish the image of anyone associated with football at the University of Florida, and if that's an example of the type of sportsmanship taught by college football programs at this state's university, then maybe the sport should be de-emphasized.